Hey everybody, Bennett for the Bennett Podcast, and we've kind of got some breaking news. This is an interesting one. The FAQ document that is released in May and November is generally speaking released right at the flipping end of May and right at the flipping end of November. And we were on the watch out this time around for a change in team tiers or star player costings. And we saw none of that come in, in the uh, FAQ in November. But what we have seen today now there's no article on the warhammer community yet this has been just discovered by the community so props for you guys out there i'm sure some comms gone out somewhere about this faq change going live but there is a little bit of a change to the november faq they've added a page and that page is all about star players so we are going to have a quick look and a less quick speculation on what the heck a mega star is okay so this is the designers commentary november 2022 document and it's all very much the same nothing has changed in it we've got the most recent updates to magenta pieces uh let me just check and see if anything else has been adapted or changed here we've got animosity we've got ball and chain you've got team re-rolls on loner and no hands and pogo stick being boosted up and throw teammate being all right again which is pretty great norse corn amazon updates all right fine all of that we've seen, all of that we talked through. <laughs> and of course, the controversy controversy of the petty cash, which we don't have to worry about anymore. All that's the same. We've been through that. But down at the bottom of the garden, among the birds and the bees, we have a page 13 now. There was no page 12. There was no page. There was nothing after 12. Now we've hit 13, which is a tier list here. And this is now boosted with this additional page of a tier list of star players. Now, this is linked, let me zoom in ever so slightly more, to the um, the match play guide that was uh, released, preview, pre-order, pre-order released direct only last Saturday. So you didn't really, really see a lot of splash release about it uh, because generally speaking, it's going to be not really used ever by anybody. We've picked up a copy. We're going to be having a look in that day at the end of the week and uh, kind of going through it. In fact, if it's here on time, we'll be going through it on uh, Blood Bowl Breakfast on Saturday morning. Would be perfect, I imagine, as it's direct only from Games Workshop. It's not going to get dispatched till Saturday, which means we won't get it till next week. In which case, we'll talk about it on the podcast when we're doing our Bonehead Awards. So, here we present the list of star players that are considered to be mega stars. In regards to the rules presented on page 14 of the Blood Bowl match play guide for tournament play, we will constantly assess the impact of star players and will update this list along each what? Alongside each update to ensure that the star players that are considered to be mega stars are as up to date and as accurate as can be. If an event is organized by Games Workshop, then it will use this list here to determine which star players are considered to be mega stars. When a star player is added to the list, it will be highlighted in magenta. Just want to check. No team tiers have changed. I like that. That's good. Hey, they use the little asterisk. I don't know if they've always done that. Uh, nothing's changed in there. Okay, right. So um, we will know more when we see the Blood Bowl match play guide. But the fact that they are flagging and tagging some star players as mega stars is potentially really good. Now, what that means, who knows? Uh, there's there's a, a bit of a a bit of a schism in the Blood Bowl community at the moment. I don't, it's not worth worrying about, even in the slightest. You've kind of got Games Workshop who are making a game that they think is fun and selling models while doing it. And then you've got the NAF, which have been responsible for kind of curating Blood Bowl for decades, okay? Now, Blood Bowl, I, Games Workshop are kind of taking the reins and trying to provide people help that have never come up. Just people who are actually just going to go play Blood Bowl. They're going to go buy Blood Bowl. They don't know anything about the NAF player base. They don't know anything about the resources that are available. They're just going to play Blood Bowl from the shop, which is kind of where Blood Bowl is, right? It, it's sold by Games Workshop. It's controlled by Games Workshop. Awesome. What the NAF and the NAF players have kind of curated is not balanced. Blood Bowl's not balanced, but... I guess a safe space for Blood Bowl. Now, there's this inherent fear of Games Workshop just dropping 
<laughs> uh, leagues of Voltan style um, overpowered teams and overpowered star players. And while I think the teams have been in have perfectly balanced, uh, I know there's a bit of concern around the strength four players on the Amazon roster, but quite frankly, I think that's much better. I'd rather they were a bit better and a little less boring, so they get a tick for that one. But we've definitely seen some um, some power creep, some power level concerns when it comes to star players. Now, those star players are very much on this list. It's interesting. We saw the World Cup uh, rules come out a few weeks ago. We talked about them on the podcast. And um, there was one star player in there that we were like, seriously, Creek? Is is Creek that much of a problem? Well, he's made the mega star list. So the mega stars are Bomber, Dribble Snot, Deep Brute, Strong Branch, Griff Overworld, Hack Flem, Shuttle Spike, <laughs> Scuttle Spike, amazing, um, Creek, and Morgan Thorg. Morg, yes. Griff, yes. Hackflem, yes. In fact, it's Hackflem, then Griff, then Morg. I think in the way of star players being just really good. Uh, Morg's a funny one. He just adds just awesome bash to a situation. Um, whereas Griff and Creek basically just one man the game, which is fine. It's fun to have that. Deep Root, Bomber. Oh, well, yeah. Deep Root, I don't see him as that much of a problem. He's just a really effective star player, and it's because of that Mighty Blow plus two. Uh, we saw it, I think, in the very first game that we filmed of Blood Bowl 2020. Mighty Blow plus two is pretty lush. I quite like the Giant for that very reason. Multiple block gives you two attempts at a strength seven multi block, so that's pretty sexy too. Um... Bomber is warping the meta when it comes to tournaments and leagues. The petty cash thing is going to limit that. It is going to limit that. But Bomber is meta warping. <laughs> and uh, Cindy is probably going to meta warp it the other way around. So this is quite interesting that Cindy's not on this list. She's barely, I imagine, seen play at the moment. Um, and Cindy Pyrosol is the other Bomber. There's 50k but plays for Old World Alliance. So you've got... No, not Old World Alliance. Old World cup old world super league i don't know old world um okay so we've got this list of super mega stars now what what, what that means i imagine is going to be a floating variable i imagine that it's going to be right tournament star tournament players when it comes to this competition pack that's coming out this weekend from games workshop i don't believe there's anything in there that's particularly exciting particularly different and particularly new it's just going to be a case of hey do these fun things and you know what i'm all for that as for paying £10 for a guide to run a tournament that's going to be stuff you already knew, fine. For those people that don't know anything about bigger Blood Bowl, like the NAF or anything like that, it will be useful. And I imagine picking up that book is going to give you some really exciting ideas to run an event. And I think that's the difference here. You, you run a tournament or you run an event. Events and tournaments are kind of interchangeable. And I think Games Workshop lean more towards an event than a competitive tournament. So what this is going to do is it's going to flag a megastar and then you kind of get that balancing factor of, right, does a megastar use both of my star player slots? Does a megastar use half of my skill allowance, half of my SPP allowance? That's, that's what it is. It's flagged as this for that reason. So there is kind of a curated but not really because it's Games Workshop, balanced, but not really because it's Blood Bowl, element to it that kind of adds an extra factor. So that if you are coming to Blood Bowl brand new, you pick up, the, you want to run a tournament for your friends, you pick up this booklet because you've heard about it, and it says how to run a tournament. It gives you some guidance on that. You've got megastars. And then you say to the guys at the club, you say to all the people, you're like, right, well, megastars use both your star player allowance for this tournament or you don't get skills if you take a megastar. Quantifiable. And therefore, it changes over time. And it's going to be a really interesting point here um, as to whether this gets rolled into what I would say standard Blood Bowl tournamenting. And... This is the interesting thing. I, I haven't really put my thoughts out there at the moment on the match play guide because I want to wait and really look at it because it is optional, right? Everything in Death Zone was flipping optional. Great fun, but optional. And that's kind of where Blood Bowl is. Like, there's a whole bunch of extra rules that you turn off because actually 10 special rules is enough. It's cool that there's 30 to choose from, but settling the 10 most reasonable ones makes it way more approachable as a game so having that element this element here it's going to be interesting to see 
the tournament sphere because it makes it quite a logical way of saying mega stars cost both your star players mega stars cost half your star point half star player points something like that it makes it really really kind of quantifiable now the world cup uh, rule set is good to the same extent but it is it double complicates it you choose your skill allowance based on stuff and whether you can take a star player then other star players also take your skill allowance so it's kind of like i have to pay it twice it's like buying things in america you buy the thing and then you play the tax separately it's kind of like that but here it kind of gives you a list of the strongest star players the most game-changing star players and actually a really nice little tagline to be able to go right Mega stars are X. Okay, fine. Do I take something off the mega star? Yeah, right. And you can even basically wrap it up to be like, hey, we've got these tiers. This is the tier for a star. This is the tier for. Uh, this is your tier team, and this is your skill package if you've got a mega star. So nice and easy and quantifiable, because Blood Bowl should be chill. There's nice competitive edges to be found, but quite frankly, any team can beat any other team on any given day. It's just that these mega stars make it a little bit easier. Anyway, I am fascinated to find out what you think about this. Uh, I know some of you have already seen the match play guide out there, um, and uh, it's going to be really good to kind of get a hold of it and to talk through what it actually is and what it actually means, and whether or not you're going to need to know about it if you're playing Blood Bowl. I'm waiting for this book so that I can do the monthly meta because I think it's going to be quite an interesting one. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on mega stars, and we'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.